Welcome in, welcome back to the Touchdown Black and Gold Vlog, where we discuss, honor, celebrate all things college football across the entire landscape, the camaraderie, the pageantry, the traditions, and the love we have for our teams as fans, but with a special emphasis on the black and gold squads of the Missouri Tigers and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome, this is my week 10 preview episode. I am your host, Blair Parks. Holla at you, boy, as usual. And I have an excellent episode lined up for you today. Big time upcoming weekend on the gridiron between some of your favorite teams. Um, before I move any further, always want to remind you, I always welcome any sort of likes, comments, shares, smash the subscribe button. Let's get the word out there to all college football fans, to every black and gold fan near and far. Let's get, uh, let's keep a good thing going. Keep the ball rolling. So I have three segments and topics to share with you today. Uh, but just, kind of, just some general comments to start the episode today on upcoming week 10. There's only one matchup of ranked opponents good on good. So what does that mean? Does that mean it's going to be a bummer or a down weekend? Absolutely not. Because as we've seen this year, this season, a season like any other, when ranked opponents are dropping like flies... I definitely expect we're going to have several more unranked opponents knock off ranked teams. And I also am forecasting and projecting that we will see for a seventh straight week, we will see at least one, if not more, top 10 ranked teams lose at the hands of an unranked opponent. I definitely expect it. And I'll tell you how I, which one or two I believe is going to be able to pull off that feat this week. And before I get to my first segment, my key matchups, definitely want to humble myself in front of you, the black and gold family, as I do when I make a mistake. You know, at this point, watching uh, previous episodes, I do not do any edits. I don't have any walkthroughs, no redos. I hit record, have do what I do, and then send it. And whenever I make a gaffe or two, I'm always the first one to admit it. And yesterday's episode, my midweek episode, so the power rankings, I did actually make two gaffes. The first one dealt with uh, TCU. I did share with you the breaking news that came out on Halloween night earlier this week that Coach Gary Patterson and TCU have separated. He is no longer the head coach at uh, the TCU program, a legend. He he basically is the TCU program, is uh, former coach Gary Patterson. And yesterday I stated that he has been their head coach on the sideline, why they've been in three different conferences. It's actually four. The three that I did mention that are correct were Conference USA, the Mountain West, and currently in the Big 12. But he also was coach of TCU, why they were in the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, once upon a time. So I did leave out the WAC. My apologies. And the other thing, the big issue yesterday during the midweek show, and feel free to check it out if you haven't yet, definitely think uh, you'll enjoy, is I definitely share with you my remarks, my commentary and thoughts on the initial uh, playoff rankings that were unveiled Tuesday night. One of the very first things I said out of the gate was that the non-Power 5 continues to get no respect. They're the Rodney Dangerfields, or maybe if you, if you prefer some Aretha Franklin, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, they don't get any. We already, already talked in depth about Cincinnati getting hosed in the sixth spot right now. But also UTSA, I didn't even mention them yesterday because I did get caught up in my thoughts as I tend to do and kind of got out of my lane slightly, is UTSA is currently one of the very few remaining undefeated teams. They do play in Conference USA. They've been ranked the last several weeks in the AP poll, which is actually their first ever rating as a program. 
And if you look at the playoff uh, rankings unveiled by the committee of 13 experts, in my air quotes, that UTSA completely snubbed, not even ranked in the top 25. So once again, all the committee told us was the non-Power 5, you've got no shot, no chance to ever crash the party in the current format of only four teams. That's just how it is. Also, Coastal Carolina, who did suffer uh, their, a loss a couple weeks ago at Appalachian State. They have absolutely dominated the Sun Belt Conference, another non-Power 5, plays excellent brand of football. They're nowhere to be found. They're not ranked either. Neither is Louisiana within the Sun Belt in SMU, who just lost their first game uh, last weekend at the hands of Houston. Not ranked, and even Houston, who knocked off number 19 undefeated SMU. They've now won seven straight games after dropping their first game of the season. Nowhere to be found either. So once again, the committee does what they do. At least they're consistent, but not the consistency that we want as college football fans, especially in this season. And definitely check out yesterday's episode. Um, one of the very one of my favorite ones I've done so far because definitely I had a lot to say about the college football playoff rankings and just I had more time to think about it and I, I hate to go back but I'll make this quick is I already said that basically they sent the message to Cincinnati that hey you'll make a New Year's Six Bowl if you went out so be grateful for that be thankful you'll get your big check now you know bury your head in the sand and shut up. That's basically what they said to them. And looking at the rankings, I thought, well, maybe there's still a shot that they can get their, they can make their way in if they win out and if a few teams ahead of them lose. But upon further review, throwing the red flag, they've got no shot. 0.0% chance of making the playoff. Thank you, Dean Wormer. Because teams behind them, if they win, they're going to absolutely jump Cincinnati no matter what they do. I mean, Oklahoma sitting number eight. They've been penalized for kind of a soft schedule, but they have three tough games remaining against Oklahoma State, Baylor. Both of those squads are ranked in uh, the initial rankings, and Iowa State. So if they win out, get to the Big 12 title game, win the conference title, they will absolutely hop Cincinnati. There's no doubt about it. And Michigan who's right behind them in the seven hole, if they're able to knock off Ohio State, get to the Big Ten title game, they absolutely will jump them as well. And even Wake Forest. If Wake Forest can run the table, get the 13-0, an ACC champion, and they are a Power 5 champ, even though the ACC is down, I believe they will hop Cincinnati as well. So they've got no shot. It's just a, it continues to be, uh, the overall theme we see year in and year out, it comes down to the name, the brands, and the perception. Perception becomes reality. I mean, I look at Oklahoma, Alabama at number two, which was a big surprise. I was fine if they would be four or five, but to have them ahead of Cincinnati out of the gate. But then again, it makes it easier on the committee to where we don't have to look bad by having teams hop them later. We'll just have them out right now early, kind of a mercy killing, so to speak. So that's that's the that is the advantage that's the role they've kind of taken in their attitude by ranking Cincinnati where they are. I mean, I look at Alabama and sorry, I already vented yesterday, but yeah, I mean, their best win over a two loss Ole Miss team now at home in Tuscaloosa. But after that, what you look at Tennessee, yeah, they put up 52 points on them. But at the end of the third quarter, it was a 10-point game. That's a Tennessee team that's, sorry, 4-4 four and four right now. Also, they look at their Florida win. At the time, Florida was number 11 and undefeated. Now they're 4-4. Four and four. The same exact record as Tennessee and the same record as teams in the SEC like South Carolina and Missouri. Is that a really good win? And then Miami, who they, they defeated a ranked Miami team opening week, they're now also 4-4, four and four. so I just don't understand it. I still don't. Watch yesterday's. I'm going to stay in my lane, stay on track here today. So, my first segment today, I'm going to go ahead and discuss and point out some of what I see to be the key matchups for Week 10. 
First one, we got a big tilt within the Pac-12 North Division. Number four, Oregon travels to Washington to take on the Huskies in Seattle. Now, can Oregon protect their playoff bid? Uh, but this is a battle for supremacy within the division. Currently, Oregon has the one loss in conference. So does uh, Washington, I believe, has two. So if they defeat them, they will have the head-to-head -head tie against Oregon. So huge win, or huge game there in the Pac-12 North. And that's really where Oregon is. They already right now are slotted to be in the playoff. You went out, you're going to be playing in the college football playoff. As simple as that for the Oregon Ducks. And Oregon is the only hope for the Pac-12 to, to crash the playoff party. They're the only Pac-12 team that's ranked in the first uh, rankings, the, the top 25. And they're trying to get the Pac-12 back to the playoff for the first time since Washington, since the last time that happened was Washington back in 2016. Can they shoulder that kind of pressure and stress for their conference? We'll have to wait and see. And this is going to be a good game. These were uh, picked and forecast to be the first and second best teams in that division based on the expert you talked to or read on, the articles, magazines. Everybody basically had them one and two but in separate orders potentially, Oregon, Washington, Washington, Oregon. Me, I picked Washington preseason to win the North, so we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. So big game there in the Pac-12 North. Next game is UTSA undefeated travels to UTEP, University of Texas El Paso, after getting hosed by the playoff committee earlier this week, not even ranked as an undefeated team, it's really inexcusable. It's just the way it is. I mean, I don't care who you ask. I mean, it's it's something that continues to be a travesty and a problem, but moving on. So they're the conference leader. Will UTSA make a statement this week and win big against UTEP? Now, this is a big game because this is a battle of the two best teams who sit atop the Conference USA West Division. UTSA is a perfect 4-0 in conference. UTEP is a game behind them at 3-1, and one, so big-time game within the Conference USA West Division. Can UTEP rise up and pull a big-time upset? Tuned in, stay tuned in, and we'll see what plays out with this one. Next game I want to bring to your attention is number 9 Wake Forest. Undefeated travels to North Carolina, big-time game in Chapel Hill. Can Wake continue their Cinderella run? They are off to their best start ever as a program. Well done. Kudos to this point. This is a matchup of two high-powered offenses. I mean, if you blink, you might end up missing a score or two. There is going to be points aplenty in this game and uh, between these two teams. This would be a major hurdle for the Demon Deacons if they leave Chapel Hill 9-0, and oh, things definitely start to maybe fall more into place. Their, their last couple games are a little bit more difficult, the, uh, the rear of their schedule, but this will be a, a big-time feather in the cap for Wake Forest moving forward. Um, and also kind of a pride game for North Carolina, a team that was ranked number 10 with, during the initial week, the initial AP poll, falling on hard times. Let's see if they look inward and come out with some pride and pull a big-time upset against number 9 Wake Forest. Next game I want to bring to your attention, a big one. Army travels to Air Force to play the Flyboys at altitude in Colorado Springs. Why is this a big one? Because the possession of the Commander-in-Chief trophy hangs in the balance. To the winner goes the spoils of war, which is the Commander-in-Chief trophy. Currently, Army has possession of the trophy due to defeating Air Force last year head-to-head -head at West Point. So whoever wins this game will be awarded the Commander-in-Chief trophy. So big time. So other than American Pride, Eternal Glory, and the Triple Option, these things will all be on full display when these two Academy teams show uh, show up and show out this Saturday. So big time game there for the academies. Next game, 
game that's lost a little bit of luster, a little bit of oomph this year because of the struggles of LSU. But this week is the big rivalry. LSU travels to number two, Alabama. Can LSU rise up and shock the tide in this year's battle of blue bloods within the SEC West division? Can the Tigers send coach Ed Ogeron, go Tigers, out on a high note with a victory for one last time against Alabama? And or will Alabama, after a week of really being questioned, and I think, I think more people than not have questioned their number two ranking to ask, is that really legitimate? Not saying that Alabama could, could, could get to number two. They absolutely could. And I said, I was the first to say that, to where there's no doubt Alabama's going to have every opportunity to get to the playoff. But I think a lot of people are questioning their placement right out of the gate. So this is a potential um, show type of game for Alabama to where they can maybe uh, legitimize that ranking and flex and take care of business and really embarrass their rival from Baton Rouge. So big time game there in Tuscaloosa between the Tigers and the Tide. Next one, uh, kind of an under the radar game, a tilt in the Big Ten. Number five, Ohio State travels to Lincoln to take on Nebraska. And I'm calling this one Coach Scott Frost's last stand, like Custard before him. Currently, Nebraska is 3-6, and six, so with one more loss, they're guaranteed another losing season under the program's favorite son, Coach Scott Frost. Also, will Ohio State continue to look the part and feast on scrubs, or will they be challenged at a, for a, at a potential hostile environment for four full quarters? I mean, Ohio State has absolutely looked the part against the likes of Tulsa, and Akron, Maryland, Rutgers, Indiana. No offense against those programs and fans of those programs, but it's not quite the caliber of some teams that you would expect the number five, the fifth best team in the nation to look like. I mean, you should be taking care of business against those teams, but it really comes down to the pride that Nebraska needs to really show. I mean, I think if they come in there roll the Huskers by 30 points or more. I think at that point they could officially pull the plug and come Monday morning that might be one of the headlines that Scott Frost has been relieved of his coaching duties at Nebraska. We'll have to wait and see. Kind of a fun little side note, I like to always give you a little bit of knowledge, some history when I can. But after last week's loss to Purdue, under Scott Frost, who he's in his fourth year, so not even completed four years as the coach of Nebraska, they've suffered 22 Big Ten losses, 22 conference losses. Tom Osborne, when he was Nebraska's head coach in the old Big Eight days, and then I think he also did coach a few years in the Big 12, in 25 seasons, he also lost 22 conference games. Just to show you the disparity of what's going on at Nebraska from the old Nebraska, the blue blood, the legendary program that they are, to where they are now, where they have fallen. So we'll see what sort of fight Nebraska can, can show against the Buckeyes when they come to town Saturday. Now the last one I want to bring to your attention, with, this is my spotlight game of the week, the only matchup of ranked on ranked. Number 12, Auburn, travels to number 13, Texas A&M. Uh, this is a chess match within the SEC West. It continues in a battle for which team, with a victory, could potentially put the rest of the division in check and ultimately checkmate. I mean, both of these teams with the win, they really at that point can take care of business, especially Auburn. If Auburn wins... Then they went out, they host Alabama the last game of the year in the Iron Bowl. They take care of business. They went out, beat their rival. They represent the SEC West in Atlanta. Simple as that. Now, Texas A&M, a little bit more difficult path, but still, the path for them becomes clear as well. They take care of Auburn. They need to win out, but they also need someone else to hang a loss on Alabama 
which maybe Auburn could do that for them later, even though A&M has the tiebreaker over Alabama currently. They did beat them head-to-head, but A&M already has two conference losses. So they would need Alabama to lose once, and then they would represent the SEC West in Atlanta. So this is a really sort of a playoff kind of game. I mean, to the winner of this game, they've got that really good shot of getting to the title game, and especially really going to be Auburn. So big-time game, big-time game there in the SEC West. I'm really excited about that one. Now my next segment I want to share with you is give you just a little bit of insight and analysis and forecasting on how I see the games going uh, this weekend for our beloved Black and Golds, Missouri and Iowa. Both squads are in action this weekend. I'm going to go ahead and start with Missouri. Missouri, tough task this week. They travel to number one Georgia to take on the Bulldogs. They are a 38-point underdog in this game. That is remarkable to where that's a fellow Division I Power 5 team, and they're a 38-point underdog. I can't remember the last time I saw that kind of line under those circumstances. But so the expectation for Missouri to win, I mean, we've seen stranger things happen. I do believe in miracles. Yes, I do. But it would take a Herculanean-type effort for Missouri to pull this off. Hopefully they do. I would love to see it. I think everybody here in the Show Me State would. But really it comes down to Missouri. They've picked up their fourth win last week, their first SEC win. So they need two more victories to get to that coveted bowl game, which that would go a long way for Coach Eli Drinkowitz's uh, rebuild project there in Columbia. Even if they don't win this game, which they probably won't, they shouldn't anyway, they got South Carolina on the schedule coming up. That's a very good chance for a fifth win. And then you have to take care of business and knock off either Florida or Arkansas to get there. All Missouri really needs to do this week, show up, play hard, take some pride. But the biggest thing is don't Try to avoid that season-changing injury. You definitely don't want that with having to win two games to get to a bowl game. Connor Bazelak did leave the uh, game uh, last week at Vanderbilt late in the fourth quarter. He's been banged up this week, been limited in practice. I think uh, Coach Drink was going to let us know today what his official status was for the game. It's uh, Thursday afternoon, by the way. So if he's not 100%, If he's 99.1%, you don't play him because you're probably not going to win the game anyway. You need him to be healthy. And if Georgia gets up way big, way early, take Tyler Beatty out of the game, maybe every other uh, series, you got to save his legs. So Coach Drink, be smart. Avoid that big-time injury. Live the fight and play another day. You've got bigger things to play for, and that's getting to that bull berth. So we'll see what Missouri can do. Hopefully, I like to think they they keep it within 38 points, but I'm I'm not a betting man and I'm not I'm not going to bet because I'm not a betting man. I like to have other people bet their money than give me a percentage of it. What's my what's my split? That's how I like to roll. But it'd be tough. I really would say, nope, no way Georgia's gonna cover. Maybe they get up way big early or late, put in their second and third teamers. But this is a tough one. With how bad the Missouri defense has been, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. So good luck, Missouri. Try to get it done. We'll be uh, be rooting for you. Next is Iowa. Number 22, Iowa travels to Northwestern, a team that has been an absolute thorn in their sides ever since Coach Pat Fitzgerald took over as head coach at Northwestern. I mean, I love what he's done. He is my number one man crush within the the Big Ten Conference. Well, probably a a toss-up tie between him and the ball beauty, P.J. Fleck. But this is a Northwestern team that's really struggled this year. They're coming in 3-5, and um, struggling. This is really potentially a get-right game for Iowa. And I do think Iowa will lose one more game this year because of how deficient their offensive line has been. I mean, it's been awful. Kind of a little uh, stat uh, history here, that the Iowa offensive line, 
is actually on pace to surrender the worst rush average since Kurt Ferentz's second year at Iowa. And they were atrocious his first couple of years in Iowa City when uh, Kirk took over all those years ago. So they are on a collision course for history and not good history, that offensive line. They haven't been able to run the ball because of that. Spencer Petras has not been able to uh, have valid protection to deliver a pass or two. He's running for his life. And plus, he's not fleet of foot. He's not what you would call a scramble quarterback. It is a recipe for disaster. But I think this game gives them a chance to kind of get right. So I don't think this will be, well, it shouldn't be. It should not be the week that they do suffer that one more loss I think they could get. Coming into the game, Northwestern is 11th in the Big Ten in passing yards per game. They are not really a world beater through the air. That bodes well for Iowa. And also their defense is 11th in the Big Ten at surrendering rushing yards per game. So hopefully Iowa will be able to run the ball on them. In all five of their losses this season, Northwestern has surrendered at least 200 yards or more. So that's really going to be the key for Iowa this week, is can they run the ball? Can that Iowa O-line come out with some pride? And that's something that I think could maybe be the deciding factor, is Iowa's lost two games in a row. They've been dominated, embarrassed, is the prize on the line. Show us that you have something left internally. So we'll see how it plays out. Stand by. You'll see uh, how I pick these games to go down here shortly. We'll have our pick em segment. But that's kind of my initial analysis and thoughts on how the black and golds, how it could play out this weekend in their matchups, both on the road. Tough environment for Missouri. At Ryan Field in Chicago, it's probably going to be a 50-50 crowd anyway. I mean, usually there is not really a home field advantage for Northwestern. But if you look at history, and you all know I'm a fan of history, Northwestern seems to have Iowa's number very similar to Purdue. And we saw what happened in that game a few weeks back between Purdue and Iowa in Iowa City. So... Moving on, now it is time for everybody's favorite segment. It's time for week 10 Pick'em. Uh, right now I'm currently in within season. I'm having the ongoing competition with my former co-host, Charlie, Mizzou fan number one. Currently he has me by four games. I chipped into his lead last week. I'm the defending uh, champion from last week. Also this week, the guest picker tournament Rages on. This week we have a matchup of two parties. Two men enter, one man leaves. Actually, in this case, it's three people. Two men, one little girl. Because this week, the contestants are my kids, Connor and Eliana, take on my boy Caleb for their shot at Pick'em Glory and a chance to move on to the next round in the Guest Picker Tournament. So before I go into my picks, as I always do, I'm going to list the potential, what games, Admiral Akbar? The trap. It's the trap games for week 10. Always like to give you a handful of these, usually four, and then I like to revisit them next week and see, hey, did they come to fruition? Did this team lay an egg, come out uninspired, maybe looking ahead, maybe coming off a big win, kind of lackadaisical, so who should be on upset alert? Who's in, who's in a good position to be trapped? And then I like to look back and see how I did. This week, I've got four for you. The first one is number three, Michigan State travels to Purdue. Michigan State Sparty right now in the college football playoff, coming off that huge emotional comeback win at home against in-state rival Michigan. They beat down Big Brother. How are they going to respond on the road at a Purdue team that we all know, just ask us Iowa fans, that loves to spoil the party? This is a team that you really need to prepare for. I mean, if they think they can come in to West Lafayette and sleepwalk, they better be ready. All week, they've been celebrating this big victory over Michigan you know, hearing people say how good they are. They saw the, un the unveiling of the rankings. They're a playoff team. Will they come out focused and inspired, ready to play? 
or will they be blitzkrieged by Purdue? And Purdue has a history of doing this. Once again, just ask Iowa, but also ask Urban Meyer and Ohio State. This is what this Purdue team thrives on. So be on upset alert. Be ready, uh, Sparty. Next one is number nine, Wake Forest at North Carolina. And uh, next week, uh, next week, Wake Forest hosts number 19, NC State, a, which will be a battle of two ranked teams in the ACC. So maybe Wake Forest is looking ahead a little bit for this game because, like I said, their schedule does get a little bit more daunting at the end of the season. But they better not be looking ahead because, like I stated during my key matchups when I talked about this one, this North Carolina squad can put up points left and right. Defense is absolutely going to be optional in this game. So be ready, Demon Deacons. Next one, number 12, Baylor travels to TCU. Next week, Baylor hosts number 8, Oklahoma. That'll be a huge matchup within the Big 12. So maybe Baylor's looking ahead. And also with the turmoil this week with Gary Patterson being fired, leaving his post at TCU, uh, maybe I didn't mention that. TCU did give him the option to finish the season. They notified him that we aren't bringing you back. They gave Coach Patterson the option to remain. He chose not to, which I probably think that is the right deal. Rather than be a lame duck, dead man walking, just exit and let the season play out. But Baylor better not be looking ahead to the Sooners next week. Better be, You're on upset alert. You're on trap alert. And the next one is Illinois travels to number 20, Minnesota. Next week, Minnesota travels to Iowa. It's a big rivalry game for the Floyd of Rosedale Trophy. So maybe Minnesota is caught looking ahead. And also, I think Minnesota coming off being surprised in the rankings of the college football playoff rankings. I did not see that coming, especially with their two losses they have, one mean to Ohio State. It was a competitive game, but the other one losing to Bowling Green as a 31-point home favorite, and they find themselves ranked over other teams, <clears throat> UTSA, for example, or even Penn State. I mean, I think Penn State maybe even had a better argument to be ranked over Minnesota to where, yeah, they've lost three straight, bad loss to Illinois, awful loss to Illinois, to be quite frank, but also have head-to-head -head wins over Wisconsin in Madison, who finds themselves ranked, and straight up a home victory over Auburn, who finds themselves ranked. So maybe even Penn State, I think, had a better argument to be ranked with three losses compared to Minnesota's two, but that's just me. Comment, let me know what you think about that. But so Minnesota, maybe they're a little bit surprised by their ranking. They're looking ahead to facing Iowa next week. And also, um, since P.J. Fleck joined uh, Minnesota, since he took over as their head coach, Illinois has had good success against Minnesota. They have. Because once again, history teaches us to prepare for these things. And just this week, I think actually breaking yesterday, uh, P.J. Fleck signed an extension. He got himself a good raise. So maybe he might be a little bit distracted now that he's more in the money, 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 money. So be on, uh, be on alert. You're on trap alert, Minnesota. Now, now we come to week 10 pick em. And let me get everything set up here. So as every week I pick 15 games and I ask Charlie and the guest pickers to pick. We do straight up. We do not do lines. Each and every week, I will always pick the black and gold games, Missouri and Iowa. I always have at least one Academy game, the Academy Spotlight game. Always have a FCS Spotlight game because they play great football at the lower level. The Spotlight game of the week and also the non-Power 5 game of the week. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's start off. The first game out of the gate is number four, Oregon at Washington. Let's start off with our guest pickers. Let's start with the kids. Well, we're a dog family. They're all about the Huskies. They like Washington to pull the up the uh, upset. Caleb, he's going more status quo. He's picking the Ducks. So our guest pickers have a disagreement. Charlie and I, he likes Oregon. 
Me, I think Washington will be game. That crowd will be off the hook, as they always are in Seattle. But I think when push comes to shove, I think Oregon just has a little bit too much. I, I expect it to be a one-possession game, but I also like Oregon. Next game is number nine, Wake Forest at North Carolina. Another one of the games I brought up during key matchups. Our guest pickers, the kids, can't go against the Demon Deacons. They like Wake Forest. Caleb, he also likes the, the Demon Deacons. Charlie, he's also going with Wake Forest. Me, at the start of the show at the Open, I mentioned I did expect at least one, if not two, top ten teams to lose this week to an unranked squad. This is one that I'm picking. Maybe I have another one, but I think North Carolina ends the Cinderella run of Wake Forest. They outscore them. They find a way to win. I like the Tar Heels at home to pull the upset. So we have another. We have a disagreement between myself and Charlie. Next game is Boise State. The Broncos are on the road at number 23, Fresno State, taking on Victor E. Dog, our guest pickers. Even though we are a dog family, but still, my little girl, she prefers the, the horses, whether it's stallions or mares, mustangs, colts. But in this case, the Broncos, the kids are going with Boise State. Caleb likes Fresno State to get it done. Charlie and I, he's going with Fresno State. Me, I also like the Bulldogs. Next game out of the gate is number 11, Oklahoma State. Travels to West Virginia. Our guest pickers, nothing more Americana than the Cowboys. The kids like Oklahoma State. So does Caleb. Charlie, he also likes the Cowboys. Me, I, all four of us, we all like Oklahoma State in this matchup to get it done. Next game, kind of a battle of the cellar dwellers in the Pac-12. We have Cal travels to the desert, taking on the winless Arizona State, Arizona Wildcats. Now, Cal does have a couple of victories. Arizona is in the midst of a long losing streak. Will they be able to break it? Let's see. Our guest pickers, the kids, they like the Wildcats because anything basically... Four legs they like. In this case, Wildcats over Bears. Caleb also likes Arizona. Charlie, he likes Cal on the road to get a victory. Arizona has looked more competitive the last three weeks. They've been a little bit close. They're getting closer. I think this is the week that freshman coach Jed Fish gets his first victory. I like the Wildcats in the desert. Next game, we have Tennessee, a rivalry game. In the SEC, Tennessee travels to number 18, Kentucky. Let's see how our guest pickers like this rivalry game. Uh, let's see. The kids, the Wildcats, once again, they like Kentucky. Can Caleb also likes Kentucky at home to get it done. Charlie, he's taking the Wildcats. Me, I think Tennessee can score. They're quick, but I think over time... Kentucky's a big team, physical, they'll wear them down. We all like the Wildcats at home to win. Next game, number three, Michigan State at Purdue. Potential, like one of my trap games. Do, do any of us see a big upset of number three, Michigan State? The kids, they like Purdue at home. Toot toot, says Connor. He's going with the Boilermakers. Uh, Caleb, he likes Sparty, so there's a, a disagreement there. Uh, Charlie, he likes go green, go white. He's taking Michigan State. Me, I've seen this before. I've seen this movie too many times as an Iowa fan. I think they come out ready to play. Michigan State comes out a little bit slow. They get down early. I like Purdue to pull the upset. I like two top 10 teams this week to go down. Next game we've got is in the Conference USA, one of my key uh, matchup games. UTSA traveling to UTEP. The Roadrunners, me, me, at the Miners. Let's see who wins this game. The kids, there's no way they can go against uh, the Roadrunners, me, me. They like UTSA. Caleb, he also likes uh, the Roadrunners. Charlie, also in agreement. He's going with UTSA. Me, 
I'm all about uh, UTSA. I have been for many weeks. And Sincere McCormick, the running back, their uh, coach uh, trailer just got a big time extension. He's probably going to be staying there in San Antonio. We all like UTSA. Next game, number 12, Baylor travels to TCU, one of my trap games. Let's see how we like. We think this game is going to play out. The kids, they like the Horn Frogs go purple. They like them to pull the upset. Caleb, he's going with the Baylor Bears. Charlie, he's taking Baylor as well. Me, I think this Baylor team is still flying a little under the radar. Even though they are ranked number 12, I like the Bears as well. Now we get on to our spotlight games of the week. And before I pick these, let me get myself ready to go. I have my game day garb on. My hair is fluffed. I've got Tim Dwight, my favorite jersey, my favorite player. I got to represent. Now let's get on to start off with our black and gold squads. So Missouri at number one, Georgia. Will anybody pick a monumental upset? The kids... They like Missouri. They're going with Truman. They're going with the impossible. But let's see if it happens. And I think if this does happen, I think the kids should be the new number one seed moving into the next round, regardless of what happens. Caleb, he's not quite as optimistic. He's going with Georgia. So is Charlie and me. I think just Bad spot, I think Mizzou keeps it well within 38 points, maybe 20, 24, but I like Georgia as well. Next game, our other black and gold, number 22, Iowa at Northwestern. Let's see how we, we all think our Hawkeyes are going to fare in this matchup. The kids, they like Herky and the Hawkeyes to get it done. So does Caleb. So does Charlie. Me, I do expect Iowa to pick up one more loss at some point, but I don't believe it'll be this game. I think Iowa looks the part. They win comfortably, maybe not on the scoreboard, but I think it'll be a 14-point victory, but it won't actually end up being that close. We all like Iowa to win. Next game is my Academy Spotlight game. We've got Army at Air Force for the Commander-in-Chief Trophy. The kids, they like the Flyboys of Air Force. Uh, Caleb, he's going with the Black Knights of Army, which surprises me because he is a pilot after all. Uh, Charlie, he's going with the Flyboys of Air Force as well. Me, I'm going with dun, 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 Air Force as well. Next game is my non-Power 5 spotlight game of the week. And last week, I was really concerned about these two programs with conference realignment. Where, what would happen to Middle Tennessee State and Western Kentucky? They haven't been picked up by a new conference. Conference USA will go the way of the Dodo officially, I think, soon. Let's see how this matchup plays out. The kids, they like the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky and Bailey Zappi, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, a guy you probably have not heard of. Caleb, he also has taken the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Charlie's also going with Western. And me, I love Bailey Zappi, what he's doing. We all like the Hilltoppers to win. Next is our FCS Spotlight Game of the Week. And this week, our eyes turn to the Southwest Athletic Conference, the SWAC. We've got Florida A&M. The Rattlers travel to Southern. I believe they're the Jaguars. Let's see who we like in this matchup of jungle dwelling creatures the kids they're going with the jaguars of southern caleb is also taking southern we got an agreement there charlie is going with florida a and m me i like the rattlers of florida a and m because it's just an awesome awesome looking mascot all right now comes the spotlight game of the week big one in the sec number 13 auburn at number 14 texas a and m Let's see who we like in this game. The kids are going with the Aggies of Texas A&M at home. So is Caleb. They both like uh, A&M. Charlie, he's also going with A&M. And Zach Calzada at quarterback. Me, I absolutely love what Auburn's doing. Bo Nix is doing Bo Nix things. He's still living on the edge, but yet living on a prayer as well. I like Auburn to pull the upset. On the road, even though they are the higher ranked team, I like the Tigers. So that's it.
That's our week 10 review episode. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, I really would appreciate any shares, any likes, any subscriptions, comments. Let me know how I'm doing. If there's something you'd like me to discuss on air, something I've left out or messed up, call me out on it. Let me know. And also, as a reminder, next week, there'll be several tweaks to the, uh, the show. I'm only going to have one episode next week. That'll be on Wednesday because the wife and I are taking the kids, packing up the car, and we're driving down to Florida, Griswold style, to spend a week at the happiest place on earth at Disney uh, World. So expect uh, that episode next Wednesday. That'll be a combination of power rankings and the week 11 preview. So until then, enjoy the football. Have a good rest of your week. Be safe. Be smart. Peace, prosperity, and thanks for being with me and joining me on the Touchdown Black and Gold vlog. I'll see you next week. Take care.